All right, Michael, we can't just sit here and cry all day. What are we doing today? Well, we can't get this to work. Because <laughs> this has just been a pain. Just give us a brief explanation. So a brief we'll explanation. Fully, we'll fully explain it in the actual next HQ yeah, episode. Yeah, so the brief explanation as to why we're not working on this today is because for some reason, what we thought happened where we <clears> didn't read the instructions right wasn't actually quite the case. Maybe a little bit, but not the entire start, entire story. Turns out what's actually happening is I'm losing spark for some reason. So it's a really weird situation. I can't quite figure it out. Like you saw the car ran and then it didn't run. I changed a few things, changed the coil because I thought the coil might have been no good. It ran again beautifully a couple of days later and then didn't run again and hasn't run again since. For some reason, I'm losing spark whenever the holly is connected to the coil. So in this setup, that I'll, I believe the setup is supposed to be that you have like a negative input that goes onto your coil and that's what sends the signal to the holly for RPM and engine speed and everything obviously. But for some reason, as soon as I hook that up to there, I lose spark at the distributor and at the plugs. Take that back off, crank it, and I've got spark again. Don't know what's going on. I've been talking to a whole bunch of people and thank you to everyone who has actually given some advice and tried to help me out. I have a feeling it's got something to do with the fact with the distributor that I'm using because it's electronic. It's not liking talking to the ECU in the sniper and something's doing funny buggers. So. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. I couldn't fix it before this week, so we're rolling this out and we're doing another car today. <laughs> another, another one of Michael's broken cars. Another one of my broken cars. <laughs> All my cars are broken at the minute, except for that. I mean, that's still. Fine. It's just puffing Billy, but it's it still just, works. It's just puffing Billy, but it still works. <laughs> that, I'll turn the key right now and it starts up. Go figure. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, I don't know when this is going to be back because. We're waiting on some info from Holly. Yeah, because otherwise, we're going to have to look at it. Potentially a different ignition setup, which is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep it simple and easy and something looking reasonably stock. That's it. I think the other thing I could do is I could go back to points distributor. We're not going to go back. We're going to get to work. That's what we're here for. That's we're it. Just, we're going to get it to work. That's we're it. We're not going to give up. One but right now, we're just going to give up for today. Yeah. One way or another, we're going to get this to work. The only reason why we're not still playing with stuff is because I don't want to do anything to damage the sniper. So I'm going to wait for professional advice to tell me what to do from here <laughs> before I just start touching things together and potentially blowing up the sniper. Anyway, what are we doing today, Nate? We're rolling in the Pooch Troll to finish it off. Yes, so we're rolling in the Maverick because we're trying to continue finishing off fixing the overheating <laughs> issue in the engine bay. While I'm saying this, I'm realizing how crappy all my cars are. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, God. <laughs> we're gonna try to finish that off, which has been in the making for weeks now. We're just gonna, we've got a hood scoop to put on that now to finish it off because we've been waiting for that to come in the mail. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll roll that in and get stuck into it. But I guess what we should do is go back in time first to when we fix the radiator, I suppose. Yeah, let's go back in time. Let's do the <laughs> Let's get this out. All right. And we can get send them back in time and they can look at what we do with the radiator. Yep. All right, Michelle, what are we doing today? Well, Today we're doing something a little bit different. If you haven't already seen this before, this is my 1992 Maverick with a Holden 5 liter in it, liter in it. If you want to see a full rundown on this, you can go check out one of our previous episodes where we basically did a full rundown on this as well as Nathan's pretty pristine, clean GT Patrol. But why this is here today? Folks, if you're going to put a 5 liter into your Patrol, stock standard with no upgrades or whatever, and which is going to weigh about nearly 3 ton with all the crap that I've got on this thing, she's going to run hot. And what does that mean? Engine bay temperatures soar through the roof in this thing. What happened last time we went away, Nathan? Cracked a radiator. Cracked a radiator, killed an alternator. What else did I crack and something else? We've cracked two radiators. We've cracked two radiators now. <laughs> but anyway, what's been happening is the engine bay in this thing is getting far too hot. The, it's, there's a lot going on in there and it's pretty cramped. And basically what we're trying to do is figure out how we can reduce these temperatures. While we were away, what happened was the, I think the engine bay got so hot that it won, it killed the alternator, or at least the regulator in the alternator, and it also was getting so hot that the relays for the thermo fans wouldn't come on because it got so hot, which obviously means the thermo fans don't come on, which means it just gets worse. So what we did when we were away is we did a quick, few quick little fixes was, you can see we've raised the bonnet like 90s style, just with a couple of spacers, just try to get that engine bay temperature out, and it kind of helped, it did, I think, anyway. And I put a little bit of temporary heat shielding around some relays to try and protect it, but it's, 
becoming an ongoing problem. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna try and figure out how we can start reducing engine bay temperatures. We're gonna heat shield the crap out of this thing. I have a hood scoop coming, which hasn't come yet, but it's been on order since November. It's now the end of February, but it's still <laughs> supposedly coming. Hopefully that will get rid of a lot of heat. And this is the joy of my Maverick. When I fix the alternator in this thing, I also fix the power steering pump, which had been an ongoing problem for a while. It had died basically, and it would come in and out. So I, I fixed that, fixed the alternator. She was sweet. Turned her on and then found she was just pouring coolant out from the bottom of the radiator and once again I'd cracked her radiator. I say that once again because this is the second radiator that I've cracked in this thing. And I'm going to explain to you why that is the case. So this right here is a TD42 aluminium radiator which I'm assuming came off eBay because that's the same place that that aluminium radiator came from when I bought it. When I did the conversion in this car it was supposed to be cheap, dirty and easy and it came with an aluminium radiator already. I'm not a huge fan of aluminium radiators in four-wheel drives. In street cars, they're fine. They work well, they dissipate, dissipate heat well, and they're also pretty substantially lighter than like your copper. But in four-wheel drives, what happens is the corrugations that you go over when you're four-wheel driving and all the bumps and stuff like that, these things start to flex. You can try and mount them with as many rubbers as you want, but generally they flex and they bounce and they end up just fatiguing and cracking. And this is what happened with this one. So it was near here, the bracket. It was up yeah, here under the bracket under in there. this one. There became a slight crack. And on this one in here, the same problem has happened, but it's actually happened down here. It's pretty common. And like I said, this is an eBay radiator. It costs you 300 bucks or something like that. If that, maybe even cheaper. And the reason why I chucked a second one of these in is because the first radiator cracked the day before we were supposed to go away on a huge trip and I, it was a sat day and we couldn't get any radiator anywhere. So I got into trusty old eBay and found someone that was selling one of these. Uh, so we threw it in and I thought, it's only a temporary measure. It lasted probably two months and yeah. that was only driving it probably maybe two or three weekends within that time I reckon. Mm -hmm. So, But there's another catch. We're going away this weekend. Yeah, we're going away <laughs> this next weekend as well too. But this time I was more prepared. <laughs> Occasionally dropping the rad hose. Yeah. How good are conversions? It's funny how when you have a glove on, you just go so much harder. Yeah. So this one is substantially heavier. So this time, when that one cracked, I just about had enough of the car because it was just driving me insane. I thought, right, it's time that I actually upgrade and get myself a proper copper radiator. And coincidentally, the time that this cracked was right about the time that I saw for the first time the radiator that was put into the LSQ, which was made by Furniture Gallery Radiators. And I was so damn impressed, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give them a call <laughs> and be like, hey, I've got a problem with my shitty Maverick. Do you have any ideas on how I can make a good radiator set up? and hopefully sort of resolve some of the issues that I'm having. And they said, you know what, leave it with us, we'll come back to you with something. And they have. Now, if anyone remembers the HQ episode, I referred to the radiator as a baby. <laughs> this is Michael's baby. Yeah, but you know what, this baby, as you just called it, is nicer than my entire four-wheel drive. <laughs> I don't know if you could have made pulling this out any more difficult, to be honest. <laughs> don't drop it, that's all I care about. Woo! She's weighty, isn't she? Yeah. Well, it's a copper brass radiator. That's nice. That's beefy. This is what this car needs. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> so, Dale down at French Gallery Radiators basically when I called him up, I said, you know, this is what I'm looking for. He says, I'll make something up for you. So, in making something up for us, what he did was he calls it a semi custom radiator because it does use some original GQ Patrol parts. So the tanks here that you see here, these are standard TD42. The reason why it's a TD42 style radiator, by the way, is because that works best with the outlets on the motor for when you put a five liter in, as in where these go. So these are standard TD42 tanks, but the core has been swapped out from a two core over to a three core radiator. All the tabs should still work in the standard positions as the standard radiator would. The other thing that they do, which is pretty cool, if you look at this radiator here, the inlet here is a really small one. This is standard for a TD42, it's pretty tiny. They swap theirs out to a Holden radiator cap, so it's a much bigger diameter. Just helps to get with bleeding, he said, and getting water in and out of it. 
The shroud itself um, is a custom shroud that they make in-house at Frontier Gold Radiators. It's, this one's made out of mild steel, but you can get a stainless steel one. And I will tell you, the, the stainless steel ones do look pretty sweet. <laughs> These are running the two 14-inch spell fans. They're big-ass fans. <laughs> they should have no issue cooling the engine. And hopefully, when these come on too, it should get a fair bit more airflow over the engine and actually hopefully push it out of the engine bay as well too. Especially once we get that hood scoop, hopefully that helps push it out as well. It's a good-looking bit of kit. We like working with this sort of stuff because it just makes you happy, doesn't it? It's a shame that's going into this, but <laughs> it is what it is, you know? When it comes to four-wheel drives, one of the reasons why I've sort of been fed up with my old girls because as we've talked about, we've had a fair few issues with it of recent. That's something that I just won't accept in a four-wheel drive because I guarantee you every time something goes on in your four-wheel drive, it'll be when you're in the middle of nowhere, which has happened to me a few more times than I would like to count. Yeah, I like reliability and this is just one of those things that guarantees reliability. The also benefit of this too, being that it is a semi-custom radiator, if this was to get damaged, like if a stick was to go through it or bust the radiator out completely, no matter where I am, I can go out and buy a brand new TD42 radiator and still use my original mounts, hoses, everything would just bolt back in until I could get this repaired basically. So that's another benefit of it not being fully custom where it's got custom mounts everywhere else. So anyway, that's enough talking. It's time that we get this in. Too easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually narrower than the other one. Look how one. much room there is. Get your whole head in there. <laughs> is that how we gauge things now? We just try yeah. to fit our head in it. What's going on in there? <laughs> What's that? Why is my balancer falling off? Yeah. <laughs> Look how much more space there is now. So yes. much room for activity. <laughs> well, that's it. Like, that was. <laughs> it's that was a, the minutes. bloody radiator. <laughs> it's basically a radiator swap over. Yeah. But I'll do the hard hose. No, 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 we do it one each, don't we? Alright. Alright, oh, there we go. I'll do the second hardest hose. Oh, damn it! <laughs> and then you can do the bottom one. <laughs> oh, damn it. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is, from this wire here, I'm just going to run like a wire to this fan, and then wires to this fan. And basically, she should be good to go. Then we can fill it with coolant and start up and bleed it. And then we can look at some heat shielding as well, too. One shot for everyone watching. <laughs> you plug into there and you go into there. And I'll just cable tie. Bloody beautiful, mate. Right to there. It's like it was made to be. Yeah, I know. Hey! You think to make sure they go the right way? Go? Yeah, holy crap! Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's you like could, real cold. You could be like in front of that like an easy breezy cup of girl. <laughs> that was easy. And I didn't blow any fuses. So <laughs> that means that they should be fine. Well, obviously. Put it out. <laughs> What's it doing? Cable ties. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm too excited. I just want to start. Alright. Um, fill it full of coolant and see how she goes? Yeah. Click, 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 click. That's the technical that we're going to get when it comes to sorting out cooling. My theory is if it looks green, it's good. <laughs> That's my theory too. <laughs> Nathan's pretty proud of himself. The correct way to fill your water is by tornadoing it. Just like a cruiser. <laughs> like a cruiser. <laughs> it looks so cool. Anyway. That's actually working really well. I know. Well done. A little tornado going on. What are you going to call a tornado? You know they name tornadoes? Mav. Tornado Mav. Tornado Mav. <laughs> and now we wait. Now we wait, yeah. So, I think we're happy with how it's bled. I reckon the cooling system's done and we're ready to go on to uh, doing some heating thing and this is going to blow soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Yeah. All right. So it only spewed like three times. <laughs> so this is the heat shielding that we're going to be using. Got this through TI Performance. It's 
supposed to, I don't know what it's rated to, but it's supposed to be pretty good. You've used it before on a fair lane. Yeah, it's all on the fair lane. Yeah, <laughs> takes a lot of takes a lot of the heat out of the system. So we're going to chuck this in. But um, before we do that, we're going to use a template, the complimentary CAD template that it yeah. comes with. You know, this is free. Yeah. You can't get this shit. You yeah. know, it's free. Look, it comes with the perfect same size. And it's CAD. It's CAD. CAD's, CAD's expensive. Cardboard aided design. And we don't really do this. We usually just go for it. Yeah, we wing it usually. <laughs> So, what we want... Holy crap, do you have a pen? Oh, that's the pen I gave you, isn't it? <laughs> I was going to say, surely not. Oh, I just knocked my mark. <laughs> you know... I know it has a lock. You know it has a lock, yeah. I'm just trying not to lock it. You've been using tape measures long, mate? <laughs> 400 by 400 might have been a bit big. <laughs> I feel like 400 by 400 is a bit rich. <laughs> Take off 50? Yeah. Yeah, take off 50. Oh, you're going straight for it. We're not even going to do the little testy out on it. Good enough to make two pieces. Yeah, true. <laughs> Ow! That was sharp! Yes, I know this isn't going to be the prettiest solution. Yes, I know there's probably better ways of doing this. No, I don't care. <laughs> this is all very technical. Sharpies. The Milwaukee, Texas is just about the best things on this planet. Oh, it does not look pretty. <laughs> Doesn't it? It's just flapping in the breeze. <laughs> it works though. Like, look, it's going to serve its purpose. Oh, it's alright. You can see it creates that Whoa. barrier between that and the electronics. And yeah, and it's going to shoot. It's going to shoot the heat up and not over to the side. Hopefully, yeah. So it's in, it's kind of in, but it'll sit there. It's wedged in there and it's cable tied up here. Like I said, it was never going to look pretty. There's really not much I could do to make it look pretty, um, but it just has to work. That's all, all, it's all I care about. Obviously, yeah, we could wrap the extractors, but they're so hard to get in and out. And I've got them all sealed up and everything because of the exhaust leaks that this thing had was massive. So they're all sealed to the block, so I don't want to pull them off. And it's not just the extractors that are making this engine base so hot, it's the actual engine. Being that it's the iron block, once it starts to get heat into it, it just can't dissipate it and it just holds onto it for ages so and also budget you guys asked you guys asked for budget builds this is about as budget as you're gonna get <laughs> but that's all we can really do um we're waiting on the scoop yeah well, hopefully the scoop comes sometime this year <laughs> <laughs> so we're back to probably a month later <laughs> yeah. Um, the engine bay is a lot dirtier than it was when we put the radiator in. Absolutely. That's because we went for all driving. We did. And the car went mint. It stayed nice and cool. Thermo fans were kicking in and out. Uh, I don't think you had any problems overheating. Yeah. And we were driving all day with the uh, of that real fine dust. Yeah. And like steep hills all day. It was hot too. And it was hot. So to give you a bit of context of just the difference that it made just in these alone, and obviously with all that, I didn't have any issues with the relays not uh, functioning this time, whereas I used to in the past. So whether that helped or not, or I think the main thing was that the engine bay stayed a lot cooler. So this time forward driving, like I said, it was a really hot day. It was dusty. We were going up steep hills in low gear with not a lot of airflow going over and stuff like that. But they came in perfectly. I saw an average temperature of around 95 degrees. And when it got really hot, when I was really pushing it, I'd get maybe to 100. Whereas previously, when I was just cruising around and going up on a reasonable hill, not even pushing it as hard as, I'd be seeing temperatures of around 115, 110 to 115 degrees Celsius, obviously. So I knocked off 15 degrees in the beginning. And like I said, I could not get this to go over 100 degrees, even if I tried. And I tried. So the hood scoop that I ordered, I think November last year, it is now March. Five guys hood scoop, this actually fits really well. So it nuts it's in. We're gonna cut a little hole, not too big. Cause you gotta remember when it goes through a puddle, water's just gonna flood over the engine. <laughs> yeah. And in and over the distributor. Yeah. And then so, I'll die. <laughs> it's good and bad. So anyway, we're gonna wrap the scoop, cut a hole, nut set it in, done. Yeah. It actually does look like a really good piece of kit to be honest. Um, and it is modelled on the 79 series Land Cruiser Scoop. El Scoop <laughs> And I don't know, I think it looks tough. I actually really like it. So the only other thing that I'm thinking about is how the hell do your washer jets pop through? Oh, well I'll answer that question for you. Oh, thank you. There's a beak. There's a, there's a wasp, there's a wasp, there's a wasp the on the camera. Go away! Go away! <laughs> 
<laughs> so the best thing about this I noticed is it's already got like little dints in here for where the washers pop through. Line up roughly to that I suppose and... Well the line will just feed through. Yeah, hopefully. Alright, cool. Within where do you line. want to put your scoop? Right where it is? Right where it is I suppose. Just uh, got to get it square so it's not skew if. I will just measure off the edge of the bonnet to the back. Yeah. Okay, why am I wrapping it instead of painting it? Because I'll probably get asked. I don't know. Well, we're not good painters. We're not good painters, but we've got a good <laughs> wrapper here. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just figured it'd just be easy enough to wrap it. And it's not going to match exactly the right color because this is desperately faded and clear is peeling and whatever. But I don't care. This isn't like Nathan's four wheel drive. This is a rough one. I just, as long as it works and isn't white, I really don't care. <laughs> so Nathan actually has his box of tools here today and you can see he's in his element because this is what Nathan does for a living. I put scoops on. Yeah, yeah I put scoops on for a living. I like the uh, China craft pencil and the uh, glasses So there. I don't lose it. Don't break it. Waiting uh, for the snap. <laughs> oh god. I guess I need you watch just now. <laughs> so anyway, the watch just around now. <laughs> that was a cool shot. <laughs> that was a cool shot. That's I like that. I was like, oh, they just chipped the paint right off. <laughs> oh look, it's chipping the paint. Oh no. Yeah, I've got a great way of doing that. <laughs> Just throw it around. <laughs> what is it? Hey! Wow. Should be right. Good as go. Good as go. You won't even see that. This is horrendous. <laughs> As I was wrapping it, we noticed that that is very blue. Yeah, and this is very dark blue. Very dark blue. So we've come to the quick realization is maybe we should have got a color match can. So we're going to see it, <laughs> sit it on, and see how bad it looks, which we're pretty confident it's going to look bad. <laughs> yeah. And if it does look bad, well, we're getting a color match can, and we'll work on it tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling it's going to look horrible. <laughs> Yep, we got it wrong. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I don't know how this that happened. This is the darkest blue in the rap book. Okay. Don't trust Michael when he says, ah, don't worry about it, just get it. <laughs> <laughs> the record, we're not completely useless. When you look at it here, at this angle, you'd barely know. It looks legit. It looks the same. But, as soon as you come around the corner, it turns bright blue. <laughs> What the? I've never seen that before. Go here. Bad. Good. Bad. Oh, well. Good, bad, good, bad. <laughs> Sorry. We're not wrapping it today. <laughs> We're not wrapping it. We're painting it. <laughs> this is why you do all the painting and I don't. Did you on purposely make it look like shit? Yes. It blends in. It's the same color at least. Did you paint the bonnet? Maybe. I tried to clear coat the bonnet and then I ran out of clear coat. <laughs> it feels like sandpaper. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my god, Michael. It was actually really hard to paint. So... Looks good though. It actually blends it in. It blends in, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got to explain the process, what I did, right? I had to... Prime it, right? Yeah. So I did. I sanded it back with some scotch Bright, then I put some primer on it. And I can only get this clear adhesive stuff, so I just put that on, that was fine. And then I painted it, and the colour, because it was white, the colour wouldn't cover. Yeah. And it took like four coats to cover it. Anyway, I put it on, and it looked great. It actually looked really good. And I clear coated it, looked really good. The blue was really nice. Put it on, and this looked way better than any other paint of the car. So then I got full Adam Savage, and Weathered it with a bit of like I got black dark. Oh, I got are you black serious? paint. I got black paint 
and I dusted it. <laughs> <laughs> it worked though, oh didn't it? Oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, but it worked, didn't it? So that isn't your attempt at painting it. No, that like I weathered it on purpose to make it look like crap because the bonnet was like crap. Oh my god, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> A lot even... of people would have just painted the bonnet or buffed the buff the bonnet. I ran out of paint. But Michael gets black and lightly <laughs> mists it. It actually looks shit like the bonnet. It actually looks really good. Well done, Adam Savage. Good weathering techniques. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, so if anyone ever questions why I never do it in the painting and Nathan does it all, I would have buffed the bonnet. We can. Uh... It's legit though, isn't it? It looks weathered. It, it matches it, it the coat. It really matches it. Wind tunnel. <laughs> The only true issue was, is this was white, I think, and yeah, it just couldn't white coat. base. Yeah. So you should have used a, a dark, a I dark primer. primer. Yeah. Cool. Looks good. Well done, man. Success. It actually looks tough. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it looks tough. Should we go for a drive? I reckon we should go for a drive. Let's see if it actually works, or whether it rips the bottom of the scoop off. Yeah, all the scoop just goes. Yeah. It's open, <laughs> kind of like alien. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it hasn't flown off yet, so that's a bonus. But it seems to be working. The temperatures are down low. The temperatures at 80 degrees, whereas normally it'd probably be about the 85, 90 at the minute type thing. So I guess that's a success. I was more worried about it flying off more than anything else. <laughs> but it's actually staying really cool. 80 degrees is pretty good. Yeah, it's probably not warm enough now. Well, it works. You can feel the heat pouring out of the scoop and out the edge of the bonnet. Yeah, and when the fans came in before, it really pushed it, it out as well it. too. Yeah. And it's not overheating anymore, so yeah. that's a win. Good stuff. I'm happy. Hopefully the thermos keep going soon. Thermos. All right, well, that's the end of this episode. It's been a bit of a different one, not one that we usually do, and it's- But it's something that had to be done in the shed. It had to be done in the shed. This is one of those jobs that we've been putting off for a long time because it's not all that fun and it's not all that impressive, but it has worked. The <laughs> idea was to try and uh, bring the engine temperature down or the engine bay temperature down, and it's worked. The scoop works well. Heat shielding has worked well. The radiator works awesome. Massive shout out again to Furniture Gallery Radiators out there. Thanks, Dale, for helping us out, mate. It's been awesome, really wrapped in it. As always, don't forget to check out the website, uh, merch up for sale there, and get yourselves a sticker pack. Yeah. Two for the price of four, for the price of four, for the price of two, or something like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made it sound bad, but then I come back with a good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now that this thing's finished and somewhat working again, there's still a few other little things and leaks that I need to fix. Um, we're gonna use it, so it's Easter weekend next week, so we're getting away. Uh, which means we might not have an episode out next week, we're not sure yet because we're sort of doing this week by week at the minute so we might miss one next week guys and we apologize for that but we just... Work is a really big inconvenience when it comes to this <laughs> like if we could just skip the whole working thing and just do this every day it would be sweet but unfortunately... We just uh, can't seem to ca get that catch up. We, yeah. we just can't seem to get ahead right now. Yeah. And we're trying. Everything but... seems to go wrong whenever we try and do something. Yeah. I.e. my HQ. Yeah. But it is what it is. We'll have something out the week after that, I'm sure. It's just a matter of what. We don't know because we're playing this by ear at the minute. We're waiting on parts and information and everything. So until then, see you in the next one. See you in the next one. I've never used one of these before. How do I use this thing? You turn it. I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fancy. It's got a cap thingy lid on it. Pull it up. Hang on, to uninstall yeah, now... lift lever and turn cap. That's what I did. Yeah. What do you have to do? Sometimes you just... <laughs> sometimes you need a man to do a... No! Sometimes <laughs> you need a man to do a boy's job! Yes! <laughs> You're so happy with yourself right now, are you? You gotta push it down. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the support there, Nate. <laughs> Fan dangled device. Yeah, there's a cap on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allergic to bees? Why? Because the bee just flew down between the battery and the fuse box there.
He bloody did too. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried he's going to crawl out and bite me. There he is. Where? He own ass. <laughs> but we'll see how we go. You know half your light's not working, yeah? No, no, that's just... That's zoned. So you push that there. <laughs> and turn on the other zone. You want to turn it off? It's got there a... Go. It's, it's got that touch sensitive. Yeah, touch sensitive. <laughs> this is modern technology, mate. Alright, mate. See? And they're on a timer as well sometimes as well. That's eBay. A dimmer? A dimmer. It's got a dimmer setting. <laughs> It's got dim, dim setting. Put it back up. <laughs> Full turn, it, turn it off. It's the same, same power, mate. It's like those, uh, you know, the stainless steel uh, lamps. Yeah, and they're like you just touch them. You can just touch it wherever. Yeah, it's that's saving the environment, mate. <laughs> oh, God. This might actually be a good episode. <laughs> I know, it's got bees. Like, I think it's going to be good. No. It's got the birds and the bees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got so excited over that joke.